The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recover the sight of the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The body of Christ is the body that resurrects. And as a member of the church, the body of Christ on earth, we hold fast to this promise. Resurrection as community. Grounded in the love of Christ, guided by the Holy Spirit, we are going to be together forever. God has created us this way. God has brought us together to be the body of Christ on earth, and our job is simply to be ourselves. The magnificent creations that God decided this world needed that God decided this community couldn't live without. Now this might seem like a lot of responsibility at first, and I think it is, but I also believe that you are already in possession of everything you need to succeed in your role as a child of God. Actually, I think this might be an easier way of life than our modern world may tell us is the only way. Personal salvation and self-glorification, this demonic idea that you only need yourself. Contrary to the modern world in this place, in this church, you don't have to be the head. You don't have to be the shoulders bearing all the weight on your own. You see, in this place, in this church where God put you, There is good news for those who have felt that weight for all too long. It's not yours to bear alone. Even Atlas shrugged when he was condemned to carry the weight of the universe on his shoulders. It wasn't created for that. But you see, because of who God made you to be, you are a member of the body of Christ and you don't have to be self-sufficient. You don't have to think about yourself first so that you can survive. Instead, you simply just get to be the person that God made you to be, an important part of the body, but not the whole body itself. In short, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to keep up facades and unrealistic images of yourself. In this place, which I promise you is a holy and safe place, you can be yourself. That you that isn't completely put together. That you that God sees deep down below the surface. That scared you that wants to be loved without having to prove that you're worthy. That scared you that was there until it went into hiding because it got bullied into a corner one day. There are enough, no, there are more than enough unrealistic demands in the world. You aren't ever going to keep up with them. 
And the good news from our epistle today is that you don't have to. That you don't have to be everything. Actually, to think you can be this, the whole body is probably even what we might call an egomaniac. Instead, you can just be you. The simple, lovable, God-created person that has an important part to play in the ecosystem of life and community. According to our Bible lessons today, you just have to be you. And that's not everything. It's something very particular. Our epistle lesson today shares with us this amazing news that you are complete in this community. And yes, you may just be a finger or maybe just a toe even, but that isn't what should matter. St. Paul even points out that those that are actually usually considered inferior are anything but that. Part of the problem with our society is that we don't see the God-given value in every part, whether big or small in our minds. We're taught to be the head, be the shoulders, be the brains, be in control. But the problem with this is that this isn't how we were created to live. We were created to live in community where each part is not only important, but necessary to the health of the whole. We weren't created to see our glory in our own achievements. We were created to see the glory of God in the achievements of our community. We're in this together, as the famous American preacher Martin Luther King Jr. put it, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. In theory, this all sounds well and dandy, but I know that in practice, none of us act this way all the time. Sin has a hold on us. We've been taught by our sinful world that it's the fittest to survive. We've been taught that it's either us or them. We've been taught that success means being the head, but our epistle today challenges this selfish way of thinking. And it helps us to see that as a community, we are so much more than we are alone. I mean, even the head can't survive without the torso, right? No matter how much we may want to do it by ourselves, it truly is futile. Whether we all see it yet or not, we really do need each other. No matter if we think we don't. No matter if we are too scared to reach out for help yet. The good news today is that we don't have to be everything. We simply need to be us. We don't have to carry the weight of the world by ourselves. We have this community called the body of Christ that bears the weight, sometimes with us and even sometimes for us, like Jesus did on the cross. But you see, there's a great responsibility that comes from being the toe or the kidney or the ear. You are created with great purpose for the benefit of the whole. And God has shared with you all of the traits and gifts that you need to be exactly who God created you to be. These wonderful gifts shared with you through the imparting of the Holy Spirit are meant for us all. They were never meant for your individual concerns, for you to get rich and powerful, though I'm sure you've been told very different. They were meant for the health of the body of Christ, for the growing and nurturing of community. They were meant for the building up of each other. Actually, Jesus demonstrates this for us in our gospel today. Using the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the spirit they, they were meant for. Service to God and those that God loves. Now, in our gospel... We have just witnessed the devil's temptation of Jesus. 
demonic forces tried to give Jesus anything he wants in order to use his gifts selfishly. But as we all know, the devil can't trick Jesus into it. Jesus refuses to play his game. He knows better. The devil doesn't have what Jesus wants. His ministry, and ours too, is to be what the Father made it to be. Jesus remains loyal to himself and to the Father throughout his ministry, even as it begins today when he stands up to read in the synagogue. With a very careful reminder in the text, we are to understand that at this moment, Jesus stands and filled with the Holy Spirit, he begins to read. Now what is fascinating is the immediate recognition of the authority that Jesus has by those who witness this. Jesus uses the Holy Spirit as the gift that it was intended for, to preach and teach the good news. And though eventually there will be some to challenge this God-given authority, we see here today in Galilee when Jesus comes into power, it is to acclaim and praise. The people witnessing Jesus' actions see his true authority and where it comes from. They all actually really like him. At least at first. Until their pride gets the best of them. Today, filled with the Holy Spirit acting and being exactly who the Father wants him to be, Jesus stands up in front of his community and makes the biggest, hugest claim that anybody could ever make. Jesus is the Anointed One, the Messiah. He is the Christ. Jesus is the one that is to come and restore the world. Narcissistic? No. He is there simply to be who he is supposed to be, to share the gifts of himself for the people. Sure, he is the most important part, but Jesus doesn't play it that way. Instead, he makes his unveiling of who he is about everybody else. He makes it about God and God's promises. He makes it about those in need. In his community, he comes out to share with them all that they are as strong now as they will ever need to be. That the Holy Spirit has shared with them all of her gifts and that their community is now complete. Jesus shows us what it means to use our God-given gifts for the upbuilding of our community, for the glory of God setting aside our own grandeur and simply being exactly who God wants us to be, ourselves. Jesus, our example, never uses his gifts for himself. Even though, as we will learn as the gospel continues, the devil isn't going to give up trying to trick him into it. Jesus shows us what it means to have the Spirit descend upon us showing to us the completeness that we have in the Holy Spirit's indwelling inside of us, something that we all have. What more do you need to be? What more do you need to do? Nothing. The good news today is that you simply need to be who God created you to be, and that's it. Be that person inside that you have always known, but that you may have tried to keep secret. Because that real you is more than you may have ever imagined. You are important. God has decided that the body needs you. But so too, remember that you don't have to do it all. Just be you, exactly who God created you to be. And don't let any demonic forces try and trick you into thinking something different. Just be you. Amen.